And now, from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection with your host, Robert Picto. Welcome to Open Connection. I'm your host, Robert Picto. The mission statement of the Terrace Art Gallery is to enrich local and regional culture by providing a continuous exposure to the visual arts and encouraging community involvement through outreach, education, and service. The tag is currently featuring the Living Lines exhibition. On today's Open Connection, we have an opportunity to meet one of the three indigenous artists, Carrie Morgan. My name is Carrie Morgan. My Nishka name is Kalajach. I come from the House of Quiskine. My crest is the wolf crest, and my house crest is the white grizzly bear. I am from Prince Rupert, BC. I was born and raised there. My parents still live in Prince Rupert. And I, after traveling a little while, decided to land here in Terrace, BC. <laughs> A lot of people move up here and they're not really sure what to do, but if you're an outdoorsy type of person, there's plenty to do. Like I like to snowboard. I used to be a snowboarding instructor. I also do a lot of hiking. I like to do um, roller derby here, which we have uh, a little team called North Coast Nightmares. Um, we also play soccer. There's uh, volleyball, and I'm a part of a few different boards here in town for arts and also my roller derby team. My uh, father's side of the family, we are a bunch of artists. We do a lot of paintings, carvings. Um, I grew up in my household. My mom is really good at sewing, so I've been around her sewing, and I also took up sewing since I was six. And she took me to a sewing class when I was that young, and I learned how to make many different textiles. And my dad, he does a lot of drawings and he's very artsy as well. And my dad's side of the family, my great great yet, which is grandpa, he is a very well-known carver named Uye. And he's actually got a couple totem poles in some of the museums here in BC and in Toronto. So my family is a bunch of carvers and painters and I grew up around that and I knew one day I wanted to become an artist, but I never really had a direction that I wanted to go to specifically. And after traveling through quite a few countries, I decided that I wanted to get to know my own heritage. And I decided to focus my attention towards learning my own cultural arts. And that's when I decided to go and apply to Frida Diesing, the School of Northwest Coast Art. It is the only school that actually teaches it's traditional arts, and you can learn underneath amazing master carvers, Ken McNeil and Stan Bevan, and occasionally Dempsey Bob is there to help too. So they were a big help in all of the things that I learned. And in order to do form line correctly, it's actually important for you to go and learn from somebody who also knows what they're doing and what they're talking about. They bring in other artists all the time as speakers to explain how to do form line properly as well. So before I went there, I could I could easily see that that's a raven or that's a wolf, but I didn't know how to create that properly. And I even have examples that I did so that I could show even Dempsey and Ken that I didn't know what for, how to paint form line, but I was interested in it. And I even acknowledged that. And looking at those pieces, I, I definitely see that like <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing, but I, I already knew that. So after going there, I have a much better understanding of how to do that. I'm always learning. You're always learning every year that you're doing this. But my original goal for going to Frida Diesing was to actually learn how to put the form line on sewing, like on textile pieces. So I wanted to make more clothing and maybe regalia as well. But it's kind of morphed into more paintings and carvings. I really enjoy those as well. I was very fortunate to be around quite a number of students that were there that wanted to make a career out of this art form as well. They wanted to excel in doing their cultural arts and make a full-time career out of it. And in our show, I have two of my um, classmates with me at this Living Lines exhibit, and we had uh, quite a number of other students there, and we're all very unique, and we all had our own unique style of doing form line or carvings, and you could just see that we were all very different artists, just 
in the school and I, I think it was just a really good environment there to be feeding off of each other like you said. It was actually just really nice to be around not only them but also the amazing instructors there who are great artists themselves. For me personally I really wanted to just try to do everything as traditional as possible, do it very traditional Northwest Coast and they kind of taught different groups in a total because they come from different backgrounds as well. So even though they're related, they also have some people who were Simshian or Nishka or Clinkit, right? So they taught it as more like Northwest Coast style. And even though I tried really hard to just try and make it only traditional style, it always ended up just coming out a little bit more me with the traditional. And I wanted to be very respectful and do it all traditional, but as I kind of kept going with my art, it does morph a little bit more into my unique style. And it was something that I didn't really realize at first until more people pointed it out to me. And now from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection with your host, Robert Picto. Thanks for staying with us. Live in Lines explores the linear connection between the past, present, and future. For the artists themselves, where they come from, and where they are now, and where they are going, and that of their ancestors, what their people have endured in order to be here today. Let us continue the conversation with Carrie Morgan. The name of the show is Living Lines. It's a celebration of historical and personal lineage through the movement of Northwest Coast Art. It is Jamie Knoll, who has about 15 pieces in the show, and Jamie Davis, who has some of her cedar jewelry and her new line in the show, and then about 18 pieces from me, Carrie Morgan. So the story is my friend, who is a paramedic, actually hired me to do a painting for her. And when she was at a fundraiser, she was there with a whole bunch of people. And one of the police officers there in the fundraiser actually had a heart attack. And when he had a heart attack, she helped to restart his heart, so saved his life. And then because it was during a fundraiser and there was many people there, there was a group that was there and they gifted her a drum with a hummingbird on it and they told her the story of the hummingbird and she really enjoyed the meaning behind the hummingbird and asked me to do a painting for her. So that's why this painting has a heart on it and the, the hummingbird is a healer, it's a sign of good fortune and it is a sign for people to kind of grow and move past the, any of the obstacles that they've had in life and that's why it has a heart in the middle of the hummingbird design. Mm -hmm. So this print here is a frame print that's been purchased but there is more of these prints for sale at the gallery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very special considering the fact that it had so much meaning behind it personally for her but for me I also have a connection with the hummingbirds because my late grandmother who passed away when I was in high school, her favorite was the hummingbird. And every time we see hummingbird designs, we always think of her. So I have another design that I made for my auntie for a, on a drum design, and I made it into a card that's also here at the gallery. And that one, it was in memory of my grandma as well. I do carve sometimes with my uncle, my dad's brother, um, Richie Morgan, and he's currently working on a very big totem pole and it's in memory of his and my late yet um, Oye. And um, I, I haven't really worked with too many of my family members, but everyone is very artistic and they often finish a piece and it's just amazing to be around so many people who love to do art. Well, not only can you purchase the print here at the gallery or on my website, but you can also come into the show here at the Terrace Art Gallery and enter into the draw, which is free. And we will be raffling off one of my prints and one of Jamie Knoll's liquid gold prints as well on the 31st, which is the last day that we're open. So I often like to do things kind of like a mini series of designs and paintings. Uh, this one that we're standing in front of is Resilience and I made it as a design for the students that graduated Coast Mountain College last year during the pandemic. 
So the reason that it's a frog and fireweed is because fireweed is known to grow after a devastating forest fire. So it's a symbol of how you can grow and flourish after a pandemic, like the students had to go through. And also it's a frog because frogs are a symbol of rebirth and renewal from all the changes that it has to go through as like a little egg and then a tadpole and then finally a frog. This is very, in, in a way, it's very feminine looking. It's got a lot of flow and curve to it. So it's, it's rather feminine and it has a lot of balance within it. So it's heavy down here and the light flowers up here. And then it also has the frog hanging down and everything just kind of has this nice balance to it. And now from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection with your host, Robert Picto. Welcome back to Open Connection. More than 3,000 years ago, the indigenous peoples of the coast of British Columbia developed artistic traditions that were heralded throughout the world for their imaginative and stylistic qualities. Let us return to the conversation as Carrie shares about her crest. We have a lot of different crests. Um, usually it comes from a time when our people encountered something more spiritual. Uh, for my name, personally, it is the story of how my people got the wolf as the crest. So Kalajakh is the story of this girl who went out hunting with her family and got separated from, a bl from them with a blizzard and seek shelter in a little burrow underneath a tree and became friends with wolves. There was already a wolf inhabiting the den with her puppies and for survival they became friends and then eventually she survived and went back to her family and that's how we got wolf as our crest. So for many of them and a lot of people just own these stories so they, I can't necessarily tell you how they got the story of how they got their crest but that's usually how you get a crest. You have some sort of spiritual situation with either a fireweed or for my house, the white grizzly bear, or the wolf, or a raven, or frog. <laughs> I made these as a series, a mini series, and I made the resilience uh, sister called Determination. And when I made the design, I wanted it to be similar but not the same. And this one ended up being a little bit more masculine. I still call it its sister, but it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be as feminine as the other one. So as you can see with this one, it is a little bit more blockish. It's got beautiful flow to it, but it's just not as feminine and flowy as the other one. And I think that it's just an interesting mix between the two because this one, you still have that nice balance and flow, but the frog is facing a different way. The leaves have a little bit more heaviness to it. And you can also see the di three different stages of the dandelion in it. You have where it's not quite open yet, where it's blooming, and then where it's finally releasing all of its seeds. Well, for this one, it's very similar to the frog and the fireweed, Resilience, but because it's dandelion, it is often seen as a pest, but it's also something we've used for medicine for many, many, many thousands of years. And it's a known flower to grow in even the most harshest environments, like you'll see them growing through pavement. So they're very resilient in a flower. This piece kind of symbolizes where we start with our designing. So when we first go to Frida Diesing, we learn how to properly do form line. And you learn by doing that uh, just a simple ovoid. And then when you learn how to do a simple ovoid and Ken tells you that you're doing better at making your ovoids, then we start incorporating more stuff into it. And usually the next stage after just learning how to do an ovoid would be how to do a salmon trout head. This one is entitled Where It Starts. And that's because this is where you start when you want to start making any other animals. First, you start with the salmon trout head. And then after that, you can incorporate any kind of different feature to the animal just to make it like if you add a beak, you can make it a raven or an eagle. If you add big ears, you can make it a wolf. You can add short ears and it can be a bear. So this is where it starts. And then you incorporate more elements just to make it into a different animal. So an ovoid is this shape right here. And usually you'll see an ovoid. It could be just a solid black center and it always has 
the solid black center and then a thin line around it. And then this ovoid on the outside has a mathematical equation to it. And you need to at least have this bottom part half the width of the top part. For me personally, I start when I'm designing with the ovoid. It's a good place to start. It's um, almost a circular design. So from there, you can add more ovoids. You can add the U-shapes, which are these little U-shaped things that you put on them. And you can put um, other designs. Once you first put an ovoid, I find it's not, I wouldn't say it's necessarily heavy because you don't want anything in your design to be too heavy but it's a good point to start when you're doing a design somewhere. I find that with Formline, um, it's more like a puzzle when you start building it all together. It's, it's not as close-minded as some people might think because you can really just add all these different elements to it and then it becomes something totally unique and brand new. And it's just more like, for me personally, like a puzzle piece what goes where and what actually has nice balance and flow at the same time. For the show Living Lines, uh, it is an expression of like our past. Personally, myself as an artist, uh, my two classmates who are also artists and we do this as a full-time career, it, it's also a show of where we came from as artists and where we're going as artists. So we have some past pieces and some like most recent pieces, but then it's also an expression of how our art has morphed a little bit through the years of being allowed to do our art and where things are more traditional on this side and then on the other side, a little bit more contemporary modern. And now from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection with your host, Robert Picto. The research on the power of mentorship is pretty clear. People with mentors perform better, advance in their careers faster, and even experience more work-life satisfaction. The mentors benefit too. After all, to teach is to learn twice. In this final segment of Open Connection, Carrie shares what happened when our mentors showed up during the interview. I was a little on edge when they came in because um, Dempsey hasn't seen more of my new modern take on the form line and as I said I want to be respectful especially to the art and all the people who have taught me over the years um, and I think it's very difficult because art just naturally evolves and when we weren't allowed to do our art for many many years and finally allowed to learn and do our art freely it we don't know where our art would have been if we were allowed to do our art for those centuries that we weren't allowed to do art. We don't know where it might have evolved to. So there's many other artists who have do been doing form line and our traditional arts for quite some time and kind of just went in their own natural direction with it as well. So on this side of the show is a lot of my older pieces. When I say old, they're not that old. They're just a couple years and they're more traditional in style as well. And then when you go to the other side of the gallery, you see a little bit more color and a little bit more of a contemporary feel. And it's just kind of a show of not only myself and where I'm progressing, but also what maybe our art could be or could have been and might also be morphing towards as well. I never feel like I've done them justice. No, I'm, I'm still learning. I'm a student. I, I'm just honestly doing the best that I can with the tools that I was given. And I love doing my traditional art. And I love that I am allowed to do my traditional art and learn a little bit more about myself and my people. And even though I do love the pieces that I've created, I never feel like they've actually done the traditional arts any justice. The fine lines are difficult. Uh, I usually try and leave that to the end. I try and do the main um, outline of it first with like the thicker black lines and then I like to try and leave the thin lines at the very end. But sometimes that's when I'm the most tired. Maybe it's better to start with the thin lines, but most of the time I try when I'm painting to do them at the end and try and have some 
some good rest in order to actually finish the painting and the design. Some people would argue that none of it is traditional if we do it after we had the settlers come over. Um, this behind me is a lot more modern, a lot more contemporary. Um, as you can see, there's a lot more color. Um, there's actually no fine lines like I have in all my other traditional, more traditional paintings. These ones, um, I decided to go with more block style instead of with the fine lines. So everything is lined out where the fine line would be with color instead. As another series, these are the elements. We have the fire, we have the water, we have the wind, we have the earth, and they're all very colorful. And even when they're using some sort of neon color in them, we also have another color to balance it out. So even though earth looks like it's a neon color with black, it's actually neon green with a very, very dark green to nice, like have a nice balance with them. Just like you would in the design, I like to have a nice balance with the colors. I'm probably being true to myself as I'm doing my art and creating, but with an art career, you're capable and able to change your path very often. So you can decide to be painting one style and then decide that I want to have a different style when I'm painting my next few paintings. You can also decide to take any other element from your past that you used to do as an artist like my sewing, and maybe I might want to focus more on that in the future as well. So for right now where I am, I really enjoy doing these big pieces, these colorful pieces, whereas I used to do ma mainly just black. Like the healer was done when it, the original painting was done was just black. And I still enjoy black and using only that color, but I've actually really enjoyed using a lot more different beautiful colors in the background of my paintings as well. Even though I have a lot of people, luckily, who are very supportive of me, I always worry about how maybe how modern my newest pieces are can be a little bit controversial because people feel very connected with the more traditional side of the art. Um, but it's also, it's also an interesting place to be because as I mentioned, we weren't allowed to do our art or celebrate our history for many, many years. And so kind of just being an artist, a First Nations artist living today is a little bit controversial in itself. So anything you kind of create can be almost accidentally political in its own, in its own way. And this is something that I've had to come to realize recently with being around other artists, friends who have gone through this as well. The show is uh, done with both Jamie's that I went to school with, Jamie Knoll and Jamie Davis. And Jamie Knoll put in 15 paintings into the art show here. And she managed to do that while also giving birth to twins and having a toddler and a seven-year-old and a stepchild. So I'm just amazed that she managed to get so much done because I don't have any children and it was a lot of work to get mine done. So I'm very proud of her and I'm very proud of Jamie Davis for putting in her pieces as well. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Open Connection. The greatest distance in the existence of man is not from here to there, but the connection from his mind to his heart. If we can conquer that distance, we can soar like an eagle and realize our immensity within. I'm Robert Picto. Thank you.